How does a Doppler shift affect digital communications? Well, let's start by looking at a frequency perspective. And here we have a received signal shown in the frequency domain, and it occupies a given bandwidth. And if it has undergone a Doppler shift, then this central frequency at the receiver will be the carrier frequency plus some extra, we'll call that delta F. So this is what's going to be seen at the receiver. Now in the receiver, the first thing that happens is that the signal is match filtered. And for more information on this, check out the description below. You'll find a link to a video about matched filtering. And this filter is matched to the transmitted signal. So if the receiver does not know about the Doppler shift, then the filter, the matched filter in the receiver, will be centered at FC. Now, because it's a filter, that means in the time domain it's a convolution, which means in the frequency domain it's a multiplication. And straight away we can see that if our receive signal is put through the matched filter, where the matched filter doesn't know about the Doppler shift, then when you multiply these two together in the frequency domain, all of this component of the received signal will be being multiplied by zero. And so the result is the signal to noise ratio will be going down as a result of the Doppler shift. The noise power will remain the same because the bandwidth is the same across the match filter, but the component that comes through that filter from the received signal will be much less. So there'll be a loss in signal to noise ratio. Let's look at this Doppler shift in the time perspective to see it in a little more detail. So here we've got an example for BPSK where we are sending our signal over a time period capital T. And this is a representative over here from the frequency domain. And this is now just looking in the time domain. And here's an example of the carrier waveform in a BPSK example, where we're either sending plus one or minus one. So this will be multiplied by a plus or minus one, depending on the data. So this is the transmitted signal. Now let's say that transmitted signal has gone through a Doppler shift. And so it is not going to be at the same frequency as at the receiver as it was at the transmitter. So again, we're looking at our matched filter. Our match filter will be at a different frequency. So in, we'll match it up to this one here. It'll be at a lower frequency. So this one is F plus delta F. And so the match filter will be at a lower frequency over that time period. So here's the waveform at the carrier frequency, and here's the waveform with the Doppler shift. Now in the matched filter, what happens is you multiply these two signals together, and then you integrate over the time period of capital T. So what does that give us in mathematics? Well, it's a simple case of the cos waveform here, this top one here, which is cos two pi FC plus delta F times T multiplied by this one, which is at the carrier which is the matched filter. Then we're integrating over capital T time. And the plus and minus one comes from the data. So let's rewrite this using a basic trigonometric expression where we can write the product of two causes in terms of the summation of two causes. And so this is what I've done here. And we'll see that this is the cause of the addition of those two terms there. And this is the cause of the difference of those two terms. So if we see this one here, the FC is cancelled from the subtraction of these two terms. And we're just left with the delta F term in this second term here. So let's perform these two integrals. And the integral of a cos is a sine. And so we have these two terms here. Now let's simplify these expressions by looking at some typical values for FC and delta F. Now the carrier waveform is typically designed such that it goes through an integer number of cycles across the time period capital T. So FC will be M divided by capital T, where M is a large integer. We're also going to look at delta F as being a fraction of capital T. So let's call it epsilon divided by capital T, and we'll see its effect with different values of epsilon. So let's plug these two parameters into this expression here. And when we do this, we can see that we get two sync functions. We've got the sine pi x divided by pi x in both cases. 
So here we can see this first term here, which has the large integer value m in it, and the second term is simply in terms of epsilon. So now let's try to understand this. We'll start by considering simply the case when delta f equals zero to see if this makes sense. If delta f equals zero, then epsilon is zero. So this term disappears. So this second term here comes with sinc of zero, which equals one. So we've got capital T divided by two. The plus and minus, don't forget, is coming because of the data that was sent. We don't know if it was a plus one or a minus one. And what about this term when delta f equals zero, epsilon is zero? Well, we put epsilon zero in here and m is an integer. And when you've got a sinc of an integer, then that equals zero. So when there's no Doppler shift, you're going to be getting output from your match filter. You will be getting plus or minus capital T divided by two, where it, the plus and minus tells you the data. And this defines for us our signal to noise ratio. So this is the power from the signal. So what happens when you do have a Doppler shift? Well, epsilon is not equal to zero. And we can see here, this term will be a smaller number. It'll be T divided by two times the sinc of two epsilon. And the sinc function is a function that rolls off, whether it's a Doppler shift positive to the right here or a Doppler shift negative to the left. Either way, the sinc function reduces from one. So the signal to noise ratio, when you have a Doppler shift, will be lower than it was when there's no Doppler shift. What about this term here when the epsilon does not equal zero? Well, this term here, epsilon is so much smaller than m that the sinc function, you're still gonna be out in the tails of the sinc function. So this is gonna be approximately equal to zero. And let's look at one particular extreme case here when delta F equals one divided by capital T. So in this case, this term here, as we said, is still approximately zero, but this term here, so when Delta F equals one on T, that means epsilon equals one. So an epsilon equals one in here, sinc of one equals zero. So we can see here that this is an extreme case of the Doppler shift. When the delta F equals one on capital T, you actually get nothing coming out of your matched filter. And in fact, this is what happens in OFDM with neighboring subcarriers. And for more information about OFDM, again, check the links in the description below. So if this video has been helpful, please hit the like button, helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the description below. You'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel and details about my Instagram and Facebook feed where I'm on a quest to find signals in everyday life.